You just got through watching Raw. Now, it's time for HWR's Raw Reaction. Welcome everyone to tonight's Raw Reaction. I am your hardcore host, Brickhead. As always, I got the hardcore crew with me. First, he's the son of a bitch, Andy. Andy, what's up? Hello, I hope everybody's okay. And then we have the incomparable Lance Moss over at YouTube.com slash Lance Moss TV. Lance, what's going on? I'm not much little shocked they went with the way they did, but happy they went with the way they did. And over at WGS TV, he's the rest of the game, Billy Boudreaux. Billy, what's up? Andy, to tell the truth, this is not a raw reaction. This is an intervention for you, my friend, to help you come out of the closet of being a Kevin Owens fan. <laughs> No, it, it's, it's after the comment I made yesterday about all the marks that were um, disrespecting Roman Reigns, and at the end, I got my way. <clears throat> so without your help, fans, fuck you. You didn't do anything. Vince did it for you. <laughs> and last and certainly not least, he's James of the Big Easy. James, what's up? The hell goes McMahon! The hell goes McMahon! Yeah, and if you're wondering what we're referring to, we are referring to the main event um, where Rick, Roman Reigns... Rick, Ra- Rick, 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 I, I hate to interrupt you, but I think you forgot one other person who's here with us. Yeah, the old... Oh, Frank Joe, we, well, Joe, you've been quiet all night. I haven't heard you, and I apologize. Please forgive me. He's the classic wrestling manager, Joseph Knight. Joe, <laughs> you were quiet, man. Uh, I, I was just contemplating what we just saw, which was so obvious as soon as they started it with, by saying the simple phrase, if you don't win the title, you're fired. I, I think well, anytime they say that, you know somebody's winning a title. You know what, though? That's not what we, were doing. we were talking about how it was going to go in the other direction where Roman Reigns was going to be um, fired and he was going to have time and he was going to be called back by Triple H. That's pretty much what all of us said, and I even think at the show, I suggested he could win. I honestly did not think he was going to win this match, Joe. You know, I was actually surprised they actually went with that. My thought was he was going to get fired and Triple H would want to bring him back. But you know what? This is Vince McMahon. He, it took him to turn Raw around and actually shock us with something new. Once again, it's good to have Vince's creativity running a show and not Caveman uh, or Head Triple H. Well, Lance, let me ask you, uh, did you honestly see that coming, or and do you think it was the right move? Well, saying that Roman didn't, it's not time for Roman to carry a belt, I I do think it's time for Roman to get a, a rain long in the 515, and I also like the fact that they gave a lot of the, uh, well, a lot of fans what they wanted and see Vince get punched in the face. Yeah, you know what? I have to admit, uh, Billy, that was a nice bump that Vince took. It shows that uh, he could still do it all. Yep, definitely, especially for a man that, for the age of 70, if you'd taken a bump like that. And James, uh, Roman Reigns winning the title. Uh, your thoughts? Really, this, this was a really shocking thing, but as everybody said, really, WWE, you know, they're lacking in ratings. So, giving us a free world title changing hands on a Raw, you know, and, and the World Heavyweight title doesn't really change hands on Raw so often. When's the last time has that ever happened? And basically, what? Vince needs to be on Raw most of the time. That Tori needs to go back up. What the heck? Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I kind of—I you know, think we're all in agreement there that Vince again is the one that's, you know, making WWE a lot better, and hopefully we see a lot more of them because obviously that's what it takes, as Joe pointed out. Um, I want to move along to uh, one of the better matches of the night, and that was uh, Dean Ambrose versus Dolph Ziggler for the title. The uh, Intercontinental title. Yeah, no, 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 it was not. It was not title. It was not title. It was a non-title match. I thought it was. Yeah, it was a non-title. Okay. Match. Anyway, my mistake. Um, but you know, I honestly thought they was going to get the win, the win, but obviously they gave the win to uh, Dean Ambrose because I, I guess he no. needed that pa- push. No. The win went to Dolph Ambrose Ziggler. Lost, oh, Dolph that's Asian. right too. The win went no, to no, Dolph no. Ziggler. No, they they called no contest. It was a no contest. So yeah, the match. Well, 
Yeah. So the match did end in a no contest, and that's pretty much where, um, because Owens came out and pretty much power bombed him two or three times, uh, and even attacked Ziggler. So now Ziggler's got, and uh, Owens are having a match over at SmackDown. Guess who's probably going to run you know it? I got to call, uh, sh- I got to call shenanigans on what they said because considering the fact during Monday Night Raw there was a report released from WWE.com that said Triple H got injured in his match against Reigns last night. So I kind of call shenanigans on whatever WWE.com writes. Well, yeah, and that's obviously a, a botch. Um, Andy, what would you think of the uh, Ambrose versus uh, Ziggler match? It was okay, but there's a lot of bodgies in it, but everything that Dolph Ziggler seems to do these days, it's full of bodgies in if he's after getting himself fired or what. Well, it's, he should know better. He's been in it long enough. And, uh, Joe, your thoughts? The match was pretty decent. You know, it was good to see two e- equally even guys contest, do a, just a good match. And they had the psychology. They didn't go 1,000 spot monkey moves. They actually paced themselves, which is a refresher. It was finally good to see two guys finally gold school wrestling. Yeah. And, you know, earlier on the night, we even saw, um, it was Bo Dallas, uh, and I even forget who the hell he was fighting. Oh, no, R-Truth. R-Truth. And How can you the match, R-Truth just, just, so just say, bad. just say, Rick, 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 just say, Jobber versus Jobber. That's, that's yeah, pretty much pretty what I'm going to say. Yeah, it was Jobber versus Jobber, and, uh, the fact is that they actually cut away and had Vince walk in the ring. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that done before. Vince believes that he can just kick out everybody in the ring. Just to well, say, he's a closet because... Steel fan. Uh, James is a closet believer. Hush, you yeah. duck, duck lover. But you know what, guys? Here's the thing. We will know how well this show did tomorrow when the ratings are in. And if it is a lot better than what's been going on previously, that just goes to show you that it's not Vince who's out of touch. It's McMahon. It's uh, Stephanie and Triple H. And you know what? You might have a very good point there. Um, but I also think that it's Vince is also the nostalgia factor. Um, Andy, would you agree with that? No, no, really. I just I, I've been saying for weeks that Roman Reigns deserves to have the title, and it, it's taken the fans to basically push the WWE to prove what the fans wanted in the first place. Vince is very good at not giving fans what they want, but unfortunately, you're going to have to give the fans what they want because they're going to make or break your company. Whether you think you're the best wrestling organisation on planet Earth at the moment, you've put nothing out for the last 12 months but shit. Yeah. Rick, I want to ask you a question. And, right. uh, and now, this is all stemming from what happened earlier, but... Um, I want you to uh, come up with this hypothetical situation that Seth Rollins did not get injured, that he did not blow out his knee, and ended up facing Reigns at Survivor Series for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, do, do you see them, you know, in that situation, putting the title on Roman Reigns, if, albeit if Seth Rollins was not injured? You know. Uh, I really don't know what to think in that situation, to be honest with you. I mean, I thought that uh, Roman Reigns was going to win it at Survivor Series because it's one of the big four. Um, and then they probably would have had a series of matches, you know, that would probably be up to WrestleMania, if not the Rumble. Um, and I would have expected Sheamus to, tell, like, cash in at some point in time, whether it was at Survivor Series because they had a fast track or they just decided to go in a totally different direction. It's not, you know, not quite sure. Because you have to keep this in mind, when um, Seth Rollins got injured, Triple H was looking at everybody to be the next guy. We wouldn't have never had that aspect. So, uh, Joe, your thoughts? Well, I think it's exactly what we talked a, a few weeks ago. When you had all these guys are taken out of the picture, the Cena's, the Randy Orton's, now Seth Rollins, you know, once Seth Rollins is gone, I think they have to go on some sort of emergency backup. And they have, they, everything with Vince, it has to be either, the fans have to be 
100% cheering this guy or 100% booing. And you can't be a tweener. And the fans were basically half loving, half hating Roman Reigns. They had to build him up to the point where now the fans were really going over to see how well this guy can go. When he finally won the title in a clean match, even though it was little with Vince is, you know, interfering and all that. He won right in the middle of that ring. The fans totally were right behind now Roman Reigns. So expect Roman Reigns to hold the belt for a little bit long than he had it before. At least give it a couple more months and see a big match between him, Seth Rollins, maybe even Brock Lesnar, and Triple H. Because we know Triple H has to be in the main event because he doesn't like to let things go. Well, I think of that aspect, I think the Triple H match and the Roman Reigns match is going to be at uh, uh, Royal Rumble. So, obviously, I'm expecting uh, Reigns to go, go over. And that's another thing they're doing. They're trying to push Reigns up. And, you know, um, I'd like to see Roman Reigns versus John Cena now that it's gone a different route. I thought he was going to win at WrestleMania, but apparently it was wrong. So, um, Andy, let me ask you. Roman Reigns versus John Cena at WrestleMania for the WWE title. No, I want to see you fight somebody else. And John, Cena's, John Cena's had far too much glory at WrestleMania. He needs to pass it to somebody else. Well, that's my point. Okay, he always calls himself the measuring stick. And, you know, and my point is, is if uh, he was going to win, you know, if uh, Roman Reigns was going to beat John Cena, wouldn't that be passing the torch? I think the torch has already been passed off Vince, to be honest. Um, I, I'd rather see, as much as it pains me to say it, I'd rather see... Roman Reigns fighting um, Seth Rollins. Okay. Well, let's get back on track. I want to talk about the uh, the tag team divas match. It was uh, uh, Be- Charlotte and Becky Lynch versus uh, Team uh, Bella, which was Brie and uh, Alicia Fox. Uh, of course, Ric Flair had to be there because uh, you know he still can't leave the spotlight. Um, but during the match, he needs Flair the money. Pretty much... Well, I can't argue that really. Um, but anyways, during the match, uh, Flair uh, you know, gets involved in the match, helping uh, Becky get the win. Of course, Becky had her back turned and takes out uh, Brie with the, uh, the disarmor. Um, James, my question to you is, do we, does Charlotte need to turn heel, and does she need Ric Flair to turn heel? Unfortunately, yes, really. It's that the fact is, is that I've been saying this so many times. She really doesn't need her father in NXT. But the fact is, is that WWE is going to push her, and she really needs that fact because why not? She's Ric Flair's daughter. So, really, she has to have somebody to have her turn. And basically, Ric Flair is the main one because her daddy is one of the best heels in the old era, the, the old generation. Not now, but like in the old days, the best seal. So. All right. And uh, Lance, over to you. Um, we talked about a couple of times about how Charlotte uh, is riding uh, Rick Phillips' coattails too much, um, and now she's you know, he needs her to turn heel. Um, do you? Uh, same question is: Do you think that uh, she be, should be turned heel with Ric Flair? Unless when she turns heel, she socks Rick. That's the only way that can actually work. Because time and time again, having the uh, the son or daughter be the next so and so does not work. All right. Just ask Tiffany Beyonce Jr. If I had to score this from a 1 to 10, I'd actually guys give it a 7. It was a fairly decent pay-per-view. Some matches were lackluster, Paper-view. but overall, I, I, I thought it was pretty decent. Uh, James, uh, what's your overall score from 1 to 10? Well, we talking about the pay-per-view or we talking about Raw? You confused me, Rick. The Raw. I'll give it the, the, I give it a 7 because I feel like with McMahon, McMahon is that nostalgic person, basically. You need McMahon on TV to work. Triple H and Stephanie doesn't have that McMahon factor. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, McMahon's book is kind of eh, but that McMahon character is what you need 
for nostalgic area to say, hey, this could be a good role. All right. Um, Andy, over to you. Your rating and final thoughts? I'd personally give it a, give it a four. And somebody mentioned it ooh, two years ago um, on a wrestling program. I can't remember what it was. Some wrestling TV show that when Triple H dons his new short haircut and puts on the Vince McMahon jacket, he wants to drop the Triple H gimmick. And he still hasn't. He needs to be called Paul for a start before he'll start taking him serious as a manager. Why he's walking around with the Triple H name, he's still a wrestler. He should be called Paul. Well, I think I, I, I see where you're coming from to a point because the smart fans know what that it, you know know that his real name is Paul <laughs> Desk. But I think at the end of the day, that's his character. That's like Shawn Michaels HBK. And can can somebody please explain to me why every time Triple H gets his arse handed to him and Stephanie's there, she calls him Hunter. No one's called him Hunter for twenty fucking years. Well, she always calls him Hunter, at least on TV. Why can't um, call him Paul? It's I don't supposed know. to be well, the CEO. Why can't you go... I'm Andy, sure... Andy, Andy, I'm Andy, sure Andy, 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 Andy. When he goes in meetings with the um, paying people that buying the shares, he doesn't walk in and say, oh, I'm Triple H. Okay. Well, Andy, you know what? I want to move over to Joe. Joe, your thoughts and final rating. Well, actually, i got to say that Raw actually was a lot better than the pay-per-view. And I do have to give it at least a seven. Uh, the little, you know, the New Day celebration was funny. You know, the Roman Reigns winning the title. Hell, even the job match was pretty decent. You know, it, it everything that needed to happen was done, executed perfectly. And again, we have to thank Vince McMahon. I think Vince realized that the ratings were so bad, he needed to take Triple H and Stephanie off camera. And I think he found the way to do it. He They did the whole, you know, Reigns beating up on Triple H, sent him to the hospital, get him out of there. And as soon as Vince took over, voila, it was magic. You saw what he did. It's you know, a testament that he still, even though at his age, he'll let other people run it. But when he sees it's not working well, he'll stick his hand right on the drive, on those controls, and start running the ship, and it'll eventually right itself. So, yep, uh, about a seven, and I gotta say, the best match has to be the Sheamus and Reigns match. All right, Billy, over to you. Your uh, rating and uh, final thoughts. Well, for one thing, did anybody notice the New Day were dressed in, like, cult members in those jogging suits? And it looked a little bit weird to me, but but uh, that's the only uh, little discrepancy I like to say about that. Other than that, then what the hell was up with those dance moves? Like, I mean, who, who really really uh, stands on their then on their hands and, and lets somebody play with their feet like that? I, I just don't understand that. Uh, I kinda, uh, don't, it, it, don't go there, James. What One of the basketball teams did that on their bench, so yeah. Oh, the, oh, so oh, okay. Well, that makes sense then. I think, but um, anyway, I think one of the uh, things that really led into everyone watching Monday Night Raw was actually you know, not only the the appearance of Vince McMahon, but the uh, uh the the conclusion of Survivor Series. I'm um, sorry, not Survivor Series TLC, because I think everybody wanted to see what was going to happen to Roman Reigns pending what what he did to Triple H. Uh-huh. And uh, Lance, finally over to you. Well, two things. One was funny. One was disturbing. The thing that was disturbing was seeing Kofi Kingston twerk. The thing that was funny was that they put the New Day strap on on a gay guy's head. What the hell? (laughs) Hey, hey, hey. He was horny. Oh, Jesus Christ. (laughs) That's That's bad. That is so bad. Remember, you can save 20% off it. You could be like... Yeah. And with that, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, I am your hardcore host, Rick Head. Please make sure you go check us out on YouTube.com slash HWR Show. And if you want to join in the conversation, we're on Facebook in the group section under HWR Chat Room. As always, I'd like to thank my uh, sidekick and my partner, Son of a Bitch Andy, 
Andy, what do you got going on? Where can people find you? Yeah, you can find me at www.stokehaunted.com. And um, don't forget when we close for the new or the Christmas holiday break, um, come up with some ideas if you want the show to change in any way, shape or form uh, without your input. We, we can't um, we can't change things or we don't know where we, we're lacking. So we need some support from you guys. There's enough of you on the page. Do investigations Absolutely. wearing the New Day unicorn horn. Ornicorn. <laughs> and Billy, you're over at WGS TV. Uh, what do you got going on? I got a couple of playthroughs of, of uh, Fran Bo and Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Yes, if you want to see how real noobs like me try to defuse a bomb, be, um, be sure you check out WGS TV at youtube.com slash Russell Gamer. All right. And uh, Joe, finally, uh, over to you. Uh, where can people find you? What do you got going on? Well, they can find me on Facebook at facebook.com Joseph Knight Manager, or they can follow me on Twitter at jknightcwa. Pretty much, I'm just taking a break for the holidays. And then we have the incomparable Lance Moss. Lance, you're over at youtube.com slash Lance Moss TV. What do you got going on? We got album reviews, NASCAR discussion videos, Redneck Borman cooking videos, musical equipment reviews, some rants. Every Wednesday, I go live with Lance Moss TV and friends, and well, Hit him up on Twitter and uh, subscribe if you had not Yeah. And finally, James, over to you. You're from the Big Easy. What do you got going on? How can people find you? Well, well what does this break uh, Joe speak of? I have no break. I have no life. Anyway, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Fatboy504. That's P H A T B O I 504. Um, you can also find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash fatboy504. I'm going to go back into doing some gameplay soon, whenever I have a time off for work. Decide not to be lazy. And, yeah, that's it. Alright, and with that, I am your hardcore host, saying we'll see you when we see you. And for the last time, WGS-TV is in no way affiliated with any known drug dealer ever. Thank you for listening to this edition of HWR's Raw Reaction. To listen to more podcasts like this, check us out over at youtube.com slash HWR show. Until the next time, this is your hardcore host, Rick Head, saying we'll see you when we see you.